What's up, y'all? Now look, discrete math can be one of those computer science student killers, like my class, where the average of the midterm was a whopping 56%. Now don't worry, of course, the professor realized this, made the final much more manageable, and the grades skyrocketed to 57%. And of course, no curve. That's right, the average student failed the class, had to take it again the next term. But I'm here today to tell you that it doesn't have to be this way for you. So I'm about to drop my five best tips that help me and many of my students still achieve success in such a rigorous class. Now these tips are in no particular order, so make sure you stick around to the end while I'll be dropping my implementation plan to help you weave these tips together so that you can crush discrete math. So let's jump in. Tip number one, practice is king. And we all know this type of class is very exam heavy. Pretty much your entire grade is going to rest on these exams. So what do professors love to do? They love to throw curve ball questions to trip students up and get them flustered. And so in order to crush this class, you're going to have to be able to tackle these curve ball questions. So what this really comes down to is building a foundation which you can use to extrapolate onto these seemingly brand new questions. So what you have to realize here is that repetition is the mother of skill. The more that you can put your pen to your paper in practice, the stronger your foundation is going to be and the more likely you're gonna be able to tackle these curveball questions and crush the exams. Tip number two, the textbook is your friend. Now for a lot of students, myself included, the textbook can seem a bit overwhelming. It's a lot of information coming at us all at once and it can feel like it goes right over our head sometimes. But I promise that it is actually a great asset for you in this course if you use it in the right way. So what we're going to do is allow the textbook to just wash over ourselves with the information again. We're not actually gonna use it to learn the material. As you'll see in the implementation plan, we'll have already done that up until this point. And so you really just want to speed read the textbook and read for comprehension in the moment. Don't read for memorization. So we're not gonna be trying to memorize all the concepts as we go through. We just wanna get the information ingrained in our mind from a different perspective. And where the textbook provides its greatest value is actually a shout out back to tip number one. At the end of each section, most textbooks will have a ton of questions that you can do to practice the concepts that you have learned in the textbook so far. And so what you're gonna wanna do is do all of the questions that have accompanying answers in the back of the book. Some textbooks, this is all the odds. Some, they like to highlight the questions that have answers with them. These are the questions you're gonna wanna focus on. So if used in a specific way, we'll see that the textbook really is such a valuable asset to us while we're taking this class. Tip number three, get help early and often. This is where you're gonna to wanna to go to your professors, your TAs, their office hours, and get your questions answered. But you wanna do this in a certain way. Avoid going to the office hours and just saying, hey, I don't really understand this material and having them kind of try to teach you again because they really won't know exactly what you're struggling on and they might go off on tangents that don't even really help you. And so help them to help you by going into the office hours prepared with specific questions. And we'll get into exactly how you're gonna formulate these questions, but it's important to go there as soon as you can to start building the relationship with your professor, your TAs, and who knows, they may even give you the benefit of the doubt if they come across your name while grading your exams because they have seen firsthand all the hard work that you have been putting in. Tip number four, don't use the lectures to learn the material. Now, this is arguably my most controversial tip because a lot of students really like to lean on the lecture material to understand the classes that they're in. But here I'm going to implore you to instead use the lectures only to find out what the professor loves to test on. I have TA'd this class for four different professors and all of them had a very different idea of what they thought was important and what they wanted the students to know. Discrete math is too big and broad of a topic to go into depth on everything. And so use the lectures to see what does my professor think is really important in this class and what do I need to be spending my time doubling, tripling down on in my practice and in my exam prep. And finally, tip number five. If you've been paying attention up to this point, you might be asking yourself, 
Logan, if we're not learning discrete math from the textbook and we're not learning it from the lectures, where are we actually learning discrete math? And that's exactly what this tip is all about. The Trev Tutor and Trevor Brazit. These are two separate YouTube channels that have full discrete math courses, and they both do an amazing job of teaching students exactly what they need to know to conquer this subject matter. I'll link both of them in the description. My suggestion is to check both of the channels out and go with whichever one has the teaching style that you prefer. I have personally watched through both of their entire discrete math content, and my favorite is the Trev Tutor, but Trevor Brazit is also very eloquent and has an amazing way of teaching concepts to students. So definitely check his out too, and then you can decide for yourself which one you like more. So that's it for the five tips. Before we jump into the implementation plan, if you found any of this helpful so far, please consider dropping me a like and hitting the subscribe button. It really goes a long way to help me bring more content just like this. And with that being said, let's jump right in to our implementation plan. So you're gonna wanna treat this as a weekly blueprint. And what you're gonna notice is as you get up closer to studying for the actual exam, you'll have far less to study than you probably would have thought in the first place if you're following along this plan pretty closely. So at the beginning of your week, you're gonna wanna check out your syllabus or the modules and see what topics you're covering in class that week. From here, you can go to the Trev Tutor or Trevor, whichever you prefer, and watch all the videos on those specific topics. Now, this is a slow pass because this is where we're actually going to learn the material of discrete math. You really want to start to build your foundation right here on these YouTube channels. And so go slow. If you're a note taker, this is the time where you're gonna to wanna to take your notes and try to do all of the examples as they come up. Pause the video, try out the question on your own, and then restart it to see what you may have missed and you can tie up those loose ends. From here, you're going to go into your textbook. And remember, we're not reading this to memorize. We just want the information to flow over us again from a different perspective. So read it and try to comprehend each line as you go down, but honestly, read it as fast as you can to where you can still comprehend what you're reading. And now here's where the rubber meets the road. When you get to the end of the section, try to do all of the questions that have accompanied answers in the back. And here I would go for quantity over quality of practice. So if a problem is tripping you up, of course, try to go back to your videos, to the textbook and figure it out originally. But if it's starting to just take you way too long, just go ahead and skip that problem or skip that concept as a whole. You can come back to it later, mark that tough question down, move on to the next one and keep your practice going. From here, you're gonna to start to feel a lot better about the content, and here's where you want to look at the lectures your professor gave to see what are the specific topics that they love, and you're gonna to wanna to dive a bit deeper into these, so maybe do some more practice problems on them, redo some of the practice problems you've already done, watch the videos in the Trev Tutor or Treffer, and really understand those concepts because they will show up on the exams. And a great way to know which concepts the professor loves is to see which ones they give examples for. Discrete math really lends itself well to examples, and I haven't met a professor yet that doesn't use examples in their lectures. These are the questions that they absolutely think are very important, and you are going to want to know these for the exam. So start there with those concepts, concepts that they're mentioning a lot, if they're bolding anything, highlighting anything, these are all telltale signs that they really want you to understand that material. Okay, so you're really starting to feel good now because you've gone through the Trev Tutor or Trevor, you've read through the textbook, done a ton of practice problems, and seen what the professor really likes to test on. So if this applies to you, now's the time where you're gonna start your homework. That's right, you're going to go through all the YouTube videos and all of the questions in the textbook before you start your homework. And the reason for that is it's going to allow you to see the gaps in your knowledge a lot more clearly. If you just jump straight into the homework, it's gonna be a lot harder to differentiate things that you just don't understand because you haven't had enough practice versus things that you're probably never gonna understand unless you get help from a TA or a professor. And something cool that you'll probably also notice is that you're getting the homework questions correctly a lot quicker than your other peers. You may even be able to help some of them out if you guys have like a discussion board that students can help other students on, which is going to increase your retention even more of the material and really give you a leg up in this class. 
And so as I alluded to, this is also when you're going to be noting down your questions so that you can bring them specifically to office hours. So use the homework to identify your gaps in knowledge and also pull from the textbook problems that you may have skipped in your practice. Head on into the office hours and ask these specific questions and you will get a lot more guided help that's tailored straight to you. And so that's really the end of your week. You have done a lot of work up until this point, but it's going to be so worth it once you get around to the exam and you realize you're already pretty much ready to go. And now you only have to do two things. The first is attack your weaknesses. So example for me, I knew that I needed more work on weak and strong induction. And so I went to do those concepts first and I made sure I was very comfortable with them and it gave me a lot more confidence as I was studying the rest of the material for the exam. So you're gonna wanna do the very same thing. Whatever concepts you feel shaky on, just go ahead and knock those out now. If you have to go back to office hours, if you have to ask a discussion board, those are all great things to do. Do a bunch of practice problems, even if they're practice problems you've already done, you can really start to build this foundation on these weak areas and it's going to pay off. The second thing you're gonna do is look again at the concepts that your professor thought were extremely important. Look at the examples they gave, try to do the example on your own before they give the answer, redo as many of those as you can, check out any of the highlighted concepts or things they talked about a lot, redo practice problems in the textbook on these, watch your Trev tutor or your Trevor to hammer these concepts home again. And honestly, you're going to be ready for the exam at this point. If you're still not feeling comfortable, definitely feel free to do more practice, even on problems that you found easy in the first place or things that the professor maybe didn't go into as deeply. The more you do, the better you're gonna feel on the exam day. And once you get to the exam and you see your first curveball question, take a breath, Say a prayer. Tell yourself that you have done the work up to this point. You've built the foundation and you can answer this question. And then just go for it. You'll be surprised how many questions you start to figure out once you just start to get something down on the page. But that was my five tips and my implementation plan. I know that you can do this and you can crush this class. That's it for me, but remember, we'll all make it together. Just gotta keep praying.